Chris Carter here on the Locked On Steelers podcast. Today, we talk about whether or not Russell Wilson combined with Najee Harris in this offense can do enough to be the kind of offense that makes the Steelers a serious threat, even without trading for a wide receiver in the market before the deadline. We'll talk about that. Give our stars and skulls for week eight all here on the Locked On Steelers podcast. Joined by Alan Saunders. It's going to be a fun one. Let's get into it. You are Locked On Steelers. Your daily Pittsburgh Steelers podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hello and welcome to the Locked On Steelers podcast. I'm your host, Chris Carter, bringing you your daily dose of all things of the Pittsburgh Steelers. As always, you can find the show on your favorite podcasting apps and on YouTube. Like this video if you enjoy it. Subscribe to this YouTube channel to get all of your daily Monday through Friday episodes as well as our bonus content. We thank you for making us your first listen every day because we're your team every day. And today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel Sportsbook, the number one sportsbook in America. You can start this season with a big return on FanDuel. New customers can place a $5 bet and you'll get started with $150 in bonus bets. If you win your first $5 bet, just visit FanDuel.com to get started. All right. As I said before, we're joined by the man himself, Alan Saunders. He's back from SteelersNow.com. We're happy to have you, Alan. Alan, well, let, let, let's, we're going to bring the curtain back a little bit here. Alan and I are tired. We're recording this late on Tuesday night. We've had Monday night games taken out of us. I know y'all love it. And listen, Agassiz Stadium is lit for night games. The last two games, Alan, you and I were there. Steelers fans packed it, brought the energy. It is fan- a fantastic scene. What's not a fantastic scene is me the next morning being like, Ugh. yeah, it's it's been uh, it's been rough so far. But you know what? I I, uh, I appreciate the energy from the fans. I thought the crowd has been great the last uh, two home games, and um, at least it's not on the road. That's uh, you know, at least I'm not flying back from Seattle or something like this, that. This is true, or Vegas, or one or, or, or one of those. Um, certainly, let's talk about this offense here, um, Alan through two games with Russell Wilson. The Steelers scored 37 points and 26 points. Grant is more like 19 for the offense because of Calvin Austin. Uh, but they have found they have gotten over 400 yards in both of those contests, a mark that they did not achieve once when Matt Canada was offensive coordinator. And literally the, the game after he was let go, uh, they were able to achieve it. Um, Russell Wilson right now on deep balls has, has attempted – seven deep balls that balls to travel past 20 yards or, or further. He's completed five of those for 159 yards and a touchdown. That's 27 yards per attempt. Most of all NFL quarterbacks, very small sample size, but pretty efficient there on play action passing. He's, he's had 24 play action plays, 22 of them. He's thrown passes. 15 of those have been completed for 275 yards, no touchdowns, but that's a, a, a yards per, per attempt average of 12.5 of any quarterback. That's at least tried 20 play action attempts. That's the best yards per attempt this season. And while that's happened, Najee Harris has had three straight 100-yard rushing performances. And to me, it is that balance. And not just Najee, because Jalen Warren also had a pretty good game this last one as well. But it is that balance that can open things up for this offense and make them a better a, a better unit overall. Because this is – and that's all we said they needed to be, was, was, was get in the middle of the NFL. And that's right where they are right now. At this point, they average 23.4 points per game. That is 15th in the NFL, 0.1 point per game behind the Houston Texans with C.J. Stroud. Alan, what about Russell Wilson and Najee Harris as a, as a combo? Is this a fit that you think could be make this team a lot more dangerous, even more so than we, what we've seen so, so far? Yeah, I mean, when you look at the first couple games here, I mean, I thought the Jets game, yeah, they scored, what was 37 points, but mm-hmm. like, Russ was pretty awful in the first quarter of that game like mm-hmm. it, it, it took a while to get going this game um it was like a hot knife through butter between the 20s and then they kind of struggled in the red zone i don't think we've seen what they're fully capable of yet and that's yeah. two pretty good defenses i know the jets and giants are good teams but that's two right. pretty good defenses it's not like it's the Bengals who are sort of struggling to stop everybody right now and the seals are just piling on like that's that's two good defenses, and I, and I don't think we've seen their best ball yet. So I think the, the passing offense with Russell Wilson has shown so much promise. Um, I do think there's another layer yet there to still unlock in terms of what they're capable of. Uh, I thought he was really good in that game, but uh, he, he can be better, especially in the red zone. Uh, and it's just obvious. I mean, 
some of the stuff is just random, like oh, face mask penalty on Broderick Jones. That like, yeah, when was the last time you saw face mask penalty call in the offense? Like you, you go twenty games and that won't happen again. Um, it, you know, and so George Pickens left foot apparently does not obey the laws of physics. Yeah, like, was, like I, I've never I, seen I didn't think there was any way that he didn't get in that my put entire out. life of watching football. I've never seen something like that happen. So like whatever very easily could have and probably should have been a, a greater offensive performance. And so I think when you see that and you say, okay, it's, you know, two straight four hundreds and, and two, three straight hundred yard games for Najee and you know, the, the point total and you say, Wow, what happens if they really are better? What happens if they start playing some bad defenses? Like I, I don't know. I think there's a reason for a good amount of optimism about where the Steelers' offense can go. I, I think so too. And again, this is an offense that's been dealing with it. Like Zach Frazier was was a big part of why with why there were things really positively going for Justin Fields, and he hasn't even played with Russell Wilson yet. And it looks like he might be able to come back after the bye week. That'll be a really good addition there. Also, credit to Ryan McCollum. He has made that not nearly as much of an issue as I thought it might become. I wasn't sure what we'd see out of Ryan McCollum, and we'll get to his grades later. But, um, but yeah, Alan, I, I have to think that these two, the, 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 those two combined. I mean, it's something that I said when they got Russell Wilson. I'm like, listen, Russell Wilson – thriving he was at his best when he had an elite defense and he had marshawn lynch as his as his running back well the steelers got the elite defense part and i said there are a lot of comparisons to marshawn lynch and Najee harris from the way they run the connections they have I me mean, they personally you know like they, they talk all the time so like they, they're they are um they, there are a lot of things there now the big question here is alan is with the offense as it's structured right now you saw calvin austin and we'll get to his grades later um but you saw Calvin Austin catch a touchdown, be effective. Van Jefferson caught, caught a deep ball, getting the balls being worked around at different guys. Is that balance with Russell Wilson being able to find the open man in different parts of this in offense and Najee Harris and Jalen Warren being able to run the ball, is that enough for the Steelers to, to sit home and reasonably be comfortable with their offensive roster as is? Or do they, st- in your mind, do they still need to go out and get that wide receiver to or, or, or just another wide receiver in the trade market right now? You know, I think they probably still need another wide receiver, and and here's why. I think we've seen already in two games. Uh, I think we saw the Giants start to adjust to taking being able to take away George Pickens a little bit. He was not quite as open uh, on the deep ball that he was in that Jets game this past week. They they kind of took some of that stuff away uh, by keeping a safety over the top. Now that opened up some room for Najee Harris and Jalen Warren. There's always mm-hmm you know, trades, but I don't think the Steelers really had consistency with trying to go to second options in the passing game. Like, okay, imagine that same game script with the Giants taking George Pickens away, but now the Steelers are trailing early, right? Are they able to come back in a game throw? I mean, you saw like the deep ball attempt to Scotty Miller and that back shoulder to Van Jefferson. That just does not look to me like a way they could live. Uh, I love Calvin out of the slot. But that's, you know, there's only so much you can do with that. I, th- I do think they need another receiver that can help them stretch the field on the outside. Uh, I don't think, given what, I mean, like guys like DeAndre Hopkins going for a fourth, uh, Dante Johnson just for a pick swap, it doesn't seem like that's going to break the bank if they can find one. Um, and so I think, uh, I do think they still, and, and then the other part of that is, you know, the, the, the entire season I feel like has has been played under the, all of this is all well and good as long as George Pickens doesn't get hurt. Because if, if that happens, they have no other answer for anyone that can play that position. And I don't think that's a good situation. If they can afford to add a receiver, I think it's it's worth it. Again, I, I said this, uh, I think I said it, it was a Friday, the Friday episode I had, the Thursday episode, one of the episodes I recently had. I might have even said it yesterday. They, I don't think they absolutely, no, it was the Monday episode. That's what it was because it was previewing the, the game. I don't think that they need to go out and, and give up a whole lot because everyone's saying, "Oh, give a second for Cooper Cup and, the, and a second for this guy." And like, that's a that, that's a lot of draft capital. But if you can do one of those pick swaps or a fifth round pick for a, a, just a, a solid wide receiver, like you said, who can line up on the outside, you know, maybe take the top off, maybe force you to respect it, find a way to add a presence there that can boost this offense. And again, like you're not asking for a guy to be a superstar. And I think that's where people have been caught up. They want DK Metcalf. They want Cooper cup. They want Devontae Adams. They don't need that. They just need a guy that can, that can line up outside the numbers, you know, be, be a reasonable guy. But like, Hey, you cannot let that guy, 
get behind you because he's he's going to be a threat. And, and it might be as simple as that to saying like, all right, that that's that's what this offense needs. And now you have a system here, and that opens up more chances for guys like Van Jefferson and Calvin Austin to get you know easier matchups to for them to just naturally get free uh, against defenses. And if you get that. Then I think you you are in a position where you're able to do it. But again, I still think it has to be reasonable. Although there's a lot of people that are like, just make a trade, just do it for for anything. They can't just walk into a trade and try to force it to happen. Otherwise, sometimes you overpay and then you you know get a one year rental and you miss out on a third or a fourth round pick that you know Omar Khan so far the past this first two years have been pretty good at using. Yeah, I mean Dan Jefferson uh, had his best. Pr- game of the year at four catches 62 yards also ran 53 offensive snaps only got five targets that's a lot mm-hmm. of cardio like you you could you could replace a lot of those reps and not de- and not detract from van jefferson's production at all right i mean you could still use the guy a whole lot and replace half of those reps uh with somebody else and so uh, yeah I, I think there's um and, and the other thing i made this point on my podcast with uh zachary Sears afternoon drive yesterday I think the veterans on this team have played well enough that they deserve uh, they deserve the investment. Like you know, the whole point of going to get Russell Wilson was that guys like Cam Hayward and TJ Watt, they you know, they're getting older. Uh they they wanted a chance to win a Super Bowl right now. I don't think this team is like a favorite to win the Super Bowl. I'm not saying this is a place where, you know, as a poker player, Omar should be looking to push all his chips in, but like it's okay to overpay a little bit here. It's okay to 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 make that little bit of investment in these guys. I think they've earned it. We'll certainly see what the Steelers do. The trade deadline less than a week away now next Tuesday, November 5th. We want to talk we'll talk more about that as 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 the week goes on, but we got to get to stars and skulls. The grades for week 8 are in. We'll go over those grades next here on the Locked On Steelers podcast. Chris Carter, Alan Saunders stick with us. We'll be right back. But first, I want to remind you, this show is also brought to you by Built Rewards. Listen up, renters. Ever feel like you're stuck in this loop of rent payments, just watching your money vanish into thin air? It's time to turn that rent game around and start earning some serious rewards. That's where Built Rewards comes in. When? Ever, if you're ever looking like that, you can use points to jet off on a jet dream vacation, put your points toward a flight or a hotel, or stay with 500 or more airlines and 700,000 or more hotels or properties with built rewards. You could also use your points on built rewards to book fitness studio classes, redeem them towards a future event payment, or, or they're either designed to meet your lifestyle, pay rent hassle free through the built rewards app. Your rent game just got a major upgrade. Built points can have been consistently ranked the highest value point currency in the points guy and on bank rate. Earn points by paying rent right now when you go to joinbuilt.com slash locked on NFL. That's J O I N B I L T dot com slash locked on NFL. Make sure to use your our URL so they know that we sent you. That's join B I L T dot com slash locked on NFL to start earning points with your rent payments today. We're back here on the Locked On Steelers podcast. I'm your host, Chris Carr, here with Alan Saunders of SteelersNow.com. Alan, let's get to some grades. As always, uh, the grades rubric here, stars are good, skulls are bad. One to three stars for good to good to elite. One to three skulls for bad to all-time terrible. All right, Alan, normally I I, I name the, the grade rubric, and I say and I tell you who the play, how many players are in there, and I ask you who to guess. I'm going to tell you, that there is one player who received a, a, a worse than a one skull grade. I want you to guess who that player was and what their grade was. Broderick Jones. Correct. Two skulls. Give this man a new car. Oh my gosh. He nailed it out the park. Alan Saunders is correct. Broderick Jones got a two skull grade here. I, I know what's, what's happening, Alan. There is someone somewhere watching their tablet that just threw food at it. It should be a bus ticket for Broderick Jones. Because listen, listen, listen. The, the face mask, bad look, wiped away a touchdown. Inexcusable. He has to clean that up. There was a play where he got utterly destroyed on a run where he, he got blunt, uh, got a play blunt from the backfield. That was, you know, that, that was bad. And he didn't really 
overtly exert himself in this game the way I think he he, he needs to, to when he plays his best. However, there were plays that he did play well on, and there were some plays I thought that he did really well on that the Steelers just didn't capitalize on. Um, and I don't – this was not an all-time terrible game. Was this a bad game? Yes. And I think that's the thing here is that – there is a want to to knock a, a guy a little bit harder when you, it, the, the the mistakes are circled a little bit, uh, you know, when they, when they see one or two plays on film. But when I went through all the plays, I did not notice Broderick Jones. I think there's time he still looks lost. There's times he still he still makes mistakes. But I, I don't think that this was like we you and I we've done bus ticket grades. This was not a bus ticket grade game from Broderick Jones. Well, I think like the idea that like the Steelers should be so frustrated with Broderick Jones that they should be giving up on him is very misguided. You know, I, I think it was a player that uh, they knew was going to be uh, some growing pains when they drafted him. He's still very young. Uh, offensive linemen take a long time to develop sometimes. He did not come with a lot of experience. And so, uh, you know, I think the Steelers understood that they were probably going to ride the roller coaster with Broderick Jones a little bit when they drafted him. Uh, I think you've seen some highlights in the running game. I don't think it's been all negative. And I don't think it's been like, you know, obviously he was having trouble with that arm, that right arm, uh, the yeah. elbow injury in training camp. Uh, th that seems to have gone away. You know, it seems like it's mostly uh, what we were seeing last year at this point. And that's not great, but I don't think it's like so troublesome that it's a problem for the team at this point either. I just think it's, um, it's, it's a young player. Uh, someone they invested a lot in, someone has a ton of athletic upside uh, that they just need to um, continue to mold and shape and, and hope he improves. Agree entirely there. Congratulations on your new car, sir. Um, let's get into the one skull grades. As always, we start with the bad. I'm not going to guess. Good. I'm not going to guess all these. All right. No, no. There's, there's, there, and there's quite a few of them. You're not going to have to guess them. I, I only do it when there's like a limited amount of guys here. Uh, but one skull grades. We had quite a few. This might be the most one skull grades I've had in, in a game. Is now nah, like to the Cowboys is pretty rough. But anyways, uh, we had so, uh, quite a few guys. Pretty much all on defense that I gave one skull grades to Larry Okunjobi, Keanu Benton, Patrick Queen, Peyton Wilson, Joey Porter Jr., and Dante Jackson. A lot of players on defense for a game. They only gave up 18 points. But, Alan, I did this primarily because those guys up front that I named, Okunjobi, Benton, Queen, Wilson, I thought they needed to be better in the run game. There were specific plays where the Giants, especially the touchdown that the, that the Giants got, there were times the linebackers need to be able to be more aggressive. Um and be able to win, especially when you're putting these guys in over a Landon Roberts where that's what he does. And there's times where you saw Landon Roberts blow up some run plays. And I, and, and so, Hey, that, that, that's the thing there, but they need those guys to be better. I also thought Oak and Joby and Benton could have been better at, at holding the line of scrimmage down a little bit, a little bit more. I thought Cam Haber was the one defensive lineman who really, you know, as he normally does makes a difference, but the giants were able to work around them. And then for the secondary, I just, I felt like Dante Jackson, there were times he was getting beat by Darius Slayton on in, to get inside leverage that he needed to be better in. And then Joey Porter Jr., just some times where I thought that he was just slightly out of position or slightly late on the thing. The third and 16 pass where the guy just ran a, a, a really deep hook right at the sticks and Joey Porter Jr. was in the zone. He needed to – you got to anticipate that. You're protecting the sticks. That's the whole point of being there. You had every reason to to jump all over that pass and and break it up, if if it, let alone even pick it off here. Uh, going back to my one skull grades, what are your thoughts on these players? Is there anyone I'm missing? Yeah, it's a pretty solid list. I actually thought Kenny Benton didn't play enough in this game. Um, you know, they were already down Mont Adams. He only played 51% of their defensive snaps. I would have liked to see more. Keanu. I didn't think they did a good job of securing the defensive front against the run. And I, I wanted a little bit more base defense in this game. I, I don't like... Mm. I, I thought the Steelers sort of overplayed the yeah, uh, Giants, the Giants like underneath receivers. Like, mm. yeah, I got, I'm a lot more afraid of being ran over than I am of Wandell Robinson and, you know, Theo Johnson. Like, you know, the, I, those just are not elite underneath receiving options. I, I, I didn't think they needed to be in nickel so much. I thought Peyton Wilson struggled against the run. Really, the first time we've seen him, you know, he's a, he's a, He's a fast guy. I, I don't. He, he's certainly strong. I don't really think shedding is is his strong suit. And there was just a lot of soup to navigate through. And I, I didn't think he did a great job of that. Again, a, a game I might have wanted to see a little bit more E Rob in there. Uh, but I, I think this is a really good list, and I think it's pretty telling. There's nobody from offense on here, and there's nobody from offense I want to add either. 
Yeah, that's the thing. When I looked back across it, there were certainly plays that could have been made better on offense, um, and we'll get to the, get to those. But in general, I thought there were there were a lot more players who could say they did good things. We'll talk about those good things. The stars are coming on the other side of this, and I want to have some questions for you about the defense too and what we saw there. We'll do all of that next here on the Locked On Steelers podcast. Chris Carter, Alan Saunders, stick with us. We'll be right back. But first, we'll remind you that this show is also brought to you by FanDuel Sportsbook, the number one sportsbook in America. You hear us talk about FanDuel all the time. Well, that's because they are America's number one sportsbook, and you can get all the odds, ends, and lines you want in every sport, NFL, NBA, MLB, NHL, college sports, so much more. And with the Steelers on a bye, it's time to go over their AFC North comrades and their and, and their odds and ends on FanDuel.com right now. Uh, right now, all our home teams this week, the Ravens are nine and a half point home favorites over the Broncos. That's an interesting spread to give there when both teams have the same records. The Bengals are seven and a half point home favorites over the Raiders and the Browns one and a half point home dogs to the Chargers who are coming into Cleveland after the, after the Browns just had their big upset win over the Ravens. You can start your season with a big bang at FanDuel.com right now to get to take advantage of, of this awesome deal where if you're coming to FanDuel and you're and you're getting started new customers can place a $5 bet and you'll get started with $150 in bonus bets if your first $5 bet wins but go to fanduel.com today to take advantage of that offer again if you're a new customer to FanDuel just put down $5 on a bet if that hits you get $150 in bonus bets right there at fanduel.com visit fanduel.com download the FanDuel app today to experience America's number one sports book. Back here on the Locked On Steelers podcast, Chris Carter, Alan Saunders of SteelersNow.com. Alan, let's get to some stars here because there were some stars in this game. Um, what's funny, normally – how I do it, normally how when I end up looking back at film, I find a ton of one stars, some two stars, and then like a couple three stars. It was kind of the opposite this time around. I had only five one star guys, but I have a lot of two stars in this game. One star guys include Landon Roberts, Van Jefferson, Mason McCormick, Deshaun Elliott, Minka Fitzpatrick. Minka with an important third down breakup. Uh, real quick on Minka Allen, when we get to other guys here, I see a lot of people saying, "Oh, he's not making turnovers. He's he's playing terribly." I continue to push this. I don't think he's playing terribly. Teams are avoiding him. And, and if they're throwing it in his direction, it's a receiver that's well underneath him, and he's just coming up and making the tackle. That was the one play where, hey, it was play action. He had deep safety. He came up. The guy was was clear, was, was free and clear. He comes up and makes a, a really good breakup on third downs, uh, third down. But Minka Fitzpatrick has been very solid in keeping things together on the defense. I think he's a big reason why the Steelers' defense hasn't crumbled completely in games, even when they haven't played their best. Yeah, we're not seeing a lot of splash from him, and I think you know Steelers fans are probably right to expect that from him. You know, with with what he's done in his career, but they're also doing a really nice job of keeping a lid on it, and I think that's credit to him. He had the really nice breakup, uh, Darius Slayton on the whole shot, uh, yep. going to the sideline, big hit there. Um, did I think got to get uh, fooled by Daniel Jones uh, with his eyes on that first big play to Slayton? You, I thought Jones kind of moved him pretty easily over to neighbors, and then went back to Slayton, but. You know, I, I'm I'm fine with this grade for Minka, and I think I'm largely fine with Minka's uh, performance so far too. Um, good shout here with E Rob. I, I like I like the the list of you guys here. You got with one star, one stars, and I think there's I'm interested to see where I go from here because there's a lot more guys. Now you said you had a lot of two stars, so um, I'm interested, but I, I think this is a pretty good list so far. Thank you. Yeah, uh, Van Jefferson might have been two stars if he had if he had just sat down and caught that touchdown. If he, yeah. if he the, one, the one play, if he just if he doesn't drift towards the defender and he sits in that space, that's just a veteran play he needs to make. But still, that sideline catch was just a thing of beauty. You can't you can't knock that. Let's go to two, our two stars. We got quite a few of them here, and here we go with the two stars. Leading off, Cam Hayward. Like I said, of all the defensive linemen, I thought he made the biggest difference as far as the interior guys. George Pickens still think that George Pickens uh, make, making plays, even the ones that he didn't get get credit for. I think he's still that deep ball that he caught where he tiptoed the sideline in between two defenders was just spectacular. Jalen Warren uh, averaged 5.1 yards per rush. Also was good as a pass protector as usual. Russell Wilson. Now this is one I know some people, they wanted him to get three stars last week. He was on his way to a three star. If he doesn't fumble that ball at the end, 
I thought that, it, 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 his, his ability to process the field was the difference maker for the Steelers offense there. Uh, Pat, for other guys have got two stars, Pat Fryer, we've done on Washington primarily because I thought they were, they've been getting consistently better as blockers helping in the run game. They're playing a factor there. Colas Waitman, a 55 yard punt, two punts inside the 20 out of three punts total. Ryan McCollum, because I thought that he, you know, he didn't lock down Dexter Lawrence, but he made that not as much of a threat as I, it, 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 as I thought it could be. Beanie Bishop with his, with his interception. And I also threw Dan Moore in here because I thought he really helped in the run game. Some of Najee Harris's best runs came to his side. Okay, so there you have it. Lots of guys with two stars here. Anyone you got gripes about, Alan? I don't think so. I don't think I would agree. I think Dan Moore gets a star just because uh, he got hurt. And then for like probably for the first time in his entire career, Steelers fans were like, oh, no, we hey, need Dan Moore Dan back Moore. out there. <laughs> we're gonna be. We're, 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 what are we gonna do without Dan Moore? Uh, and then, of course, his backup gives up a sack on the next play. Uh, poor Callan Anderson gets thrown in there against Brian Burns. That's not really fair. But uh, yeah, I mean, I, I thought Dan Moore was pretty good in this game. I, I really like this list. Uh, Corliss Waveman, good shot. That was a great punt. Really nice cover by James Pierre too. Yeah, I maybe could have given him one star for that. Uh, that just for literally just that kick cover because I thought that was a really really good one. And uh, we will do that. And uh, yeah, I agree with Jalen Warren here too. Didn't like, didn't make necessarily like um, any headlines in this game, but I, I thought he had a really solid overall performance. I thought so too. And again, on Russell Wilson, Allen, I know that they didn't put up you know a ton of points in this game. They they stalled in the red zone, but man, you can see the difference that he is opening up in the offense with his ability to see the field, deliver the ball, and throw the ball accurately in some really tight spots. Even when – it's so funny. I, I keep going back and forth with fans. Like, those are underthrown passes. I'm like, if they're underthrown, they're beautifully underthrown, and he's been doing it for 13 years, and no one's figured out how to stop it yet. So if it's if it's underthrown, it's the best underthrown ball in NFL history. If it's in George Pickens' catch radius, then it's not underthrown. There you go. And that's why sometimes it's part of the plan. Those are your two stars. All right. We have six – Three star players, six right. that, that that I have here. I'm not going to make you guess all them. That's a lot. Well, let's see. Well, uh, let, let's all see how right. far right. I can get. See how far I can get. Obviously, Calvin Austin, yes. um, TJ Watt, Alex Highsmith. Yes, yes. Um, hmm. Okay, I'm I'm running out of steam here early. It's three more. <laughs> you are uh, on fire. Let's see. Let's see. Uh, what else we got here? It's got to be. There's a very Isaac, big name that. Isaac, correct. Isaac Samalu is a three star grade this week. All right, we two more, and uh, Najee Harris, correct. One last one, uh, one you don't normally think about. This one might be tricky, uh, kind of. Chris, Chris Boswell, let's get this man another new car. He just nailed all th six of my three star grades this week. Calvin Austin, TJ Watt, Najee Harris, Alex Heisman, Isaac Samalu, Chris Boswell, Alan. Let's let's get to a few things here. One, not too long on this one, but Isaac Sayamalu, I thought this was the most I'm back performance that I've seen of him. Man, there were some times he was move, get out the way. He was getting guys off the ball. And I think that's exactly what the Steelers need from him at the left guard position. Yeah, I thought he had a really good game. I thought uh, a lot of credit goes to him for keeping things together on that offensive line against a really good opponent in Dexter Lawrence, a guy who I think has legitimate defensive player of the year buzz. I know Russ did get sacked a couple times, but I thought it was mostly like coverage stuff. There was one yeah. quick win by um, Dexter when I, he beat McCormick quick and then Burns ended up getting the sack. But like I, I didn't think they lost quick. I, I thought they gave Russ time, and they were able to run the ball up the middle. I did not think they would be able to run the ball up the middle in this game, and they did. A uh, huge credit there. And uh, obviously, I think this is a good list. How about the pressure stats yes. for Highsmith and Watt yes. are just off the friggin' charts. 11 total pressures for Alex Highsmith. By the way, seven for Cam Hayward. That's why he got two stars. Six for TJ Watt. Again, two sacks for, two sacks for Highsmith, two sacks for, for Watt in this game, including that forced fumble that he recovered himself and just took over the game. Alan, I, I'm going to point this out. I'm working on a film study literally as we're, like right before we were recording this. It should be up uh, sometime today, uh, Wednesday, as you're listening to this podcast. I'm working on a film study because it was only four plays. But for four plays, they moved TJ Watt over the left tackle. And it was something that they don't normally do. And I asked Alex Highsmith about that after the game. 
And he said, it's something that we are working on, something we're trying to get better at. We still have to kind of feel out our chemistry here. And, and it was kind of interesting because they did it very sparingly and they even did it sometimes. And then there was an offensive penalty and they would switch out of it. Like, nope, nope, we got the, we got the false start. Now we're going to go back to this. And it, didn't produce with four plays, didn't produce like crazy results. They did get one sack out of it, um, which I thought was pretty impressive. Um, but I, I think that that's an interesting thought that the Steelers are now they are now open to moving TJ Watt around a little bit more. For context, the four snaps that they gave him on the right side, uh, you know, where to line up over the left tackle. That is that is those are the first throw snaps period he's had at that on that side all season long. In the past three years combined, that's how many snaps he's had on the right side. Yeah, I think this was a combination of a couple things. One, it's just that like the Giants tackle situation was very lopsided. Shout out to you know former Steeler Chris Hubbard from yeah. coming off the San Francisco practice squad and playing this game. But this is you know, there was like free rushes on one side. Yeah. And yeah. and so, you know, like you just kind of want to make it fair, right? You want to even it out a little bit. The other thing is without Nick Herbig, this is a really high rep game for both of those guys. I thought they were getting worn down by the end of the game. And so I don't think you probably need to do as much of this if you have Herbig available because you have a different way to throw a different look in. Right, you can just get a guy out and get fifty-one in there, but without Herbig, you know those guys played a ton. There was a lot of reps on the defense in general. I thought that was a nice way to just get a get a slightly different look without doing anything too drastic. I I agree. I agree there, and I think they're just experimenting right now. They'll probably have some more things cooked up as the year goes along. Here, let's move along to other guys here. They deserve some shouts. Chris Boswell. I mean. What else are you going to say? I, I've been saying this. There should be a kickoff contest at the end of the season between Chris Boswell and Ben Sauls because Pittsburgh right now is the kicking capital of the world. Neither have missed a – oh, actually, no, Chris Boswell did this one 62-yarder he took. But other than that, he has been perfect this year, as has Pitts Ben Sauls, who has set a pit record with 13 straight uh, field goals made there. Uh, neither have missed an extra point there. Chris Boswell continues to be to be the man. Um, but – kicking is one thing you know we can we can just talk about that briefly but i want to ask you about calvin austin and what you've seen out of him that punt return i thought was special but that touchdown the corner route that he ran the ability to get open is that something that you think this that can be a much bigger part of this offense not a regular thing not like he's going to average 80 yards per game or anything like that but can he be a guy that you call upon a lot more often than he has been called upon in these first eight games he's been wide open yeah, he's been running. It's something, we've said. It's something that you and I have been saying for weeks. Shaking. Come mm -hmm. find me. Mm -hmm. Austin, mm -hmm. Now I understand. He is a little dude. He is going to have that happen where it's hard to see him sometimes. Yeah. Like, I, it, it's going to happen in more. It's going to happen to George Pickens, obviously. But I think it's been all over the tape that he's been open and those throws have been there and they haven't been making them. So, yeah, I think he can be a bigger part of it. Now, is he going to be a guy of a high volume guy ever? Probably not, but if he's good for two or three 20 yard gains over the course of a game, then that's a pretty big, that's a pretty big deal. Like that's a big part of the offense. It doesn't have to be high volume to be high impact. And I think his ability to take the top off a of defense from the slot is not something that you can go to all the time, but I think it's an important tool to have in the belt. Like there are going to be times when you need that and his ability to do it and pretty regularly, I, I think, is a is a weapon for him. And the punt return, I mean, we've seen how close he's been yep. since he got to Pittsburgh. I feel like we've felt that coming. And, uh, you know, that was uh, – I, I think he's been really good punt returner. He's just been one block or one guy away a number of times, and, and that was finally the breakthrough. Last guy here is Najee Harris, who – that's not because of anything least. I think it's because he's more so he's done it three straight games of over a hundred yards. Alan, I've been saying for years, I don't think Najee Harris is the problem in the run game. It's, it's the offensive line needed to be better. The passing game needed to exist. And I think we're finally starting to see what Najee Harris can do when he's not consistently having to dodge players in the backfield at two yard, two yards behind the line of scrimmage. And then just to get to the line of scrimmage and then to start make other guys miss. And he's starting to be able to trust where his guys are going to be and when. And I think what he's doing right now, he is starting to show the NFL 
Steelers do have a credible, consistent run threat that it, that you do have to actually plan to take away. And if teams start doing that more and more, it's going to open up more of those deep passes. Russell Wilson's being very good at throwing, and that could be the very balance I think that makes this Steelers team much more dangerous, especially later in the season when the run game becomes more of a factor. Yeah, I think the thing about the run game to me is that they have gotten to this place before. and that, Well, not quite this place. It's the first time he's had three straight 100-yard games. Uh, but they've gotten to him playing well by the end of the season a couple times. I feel like this is the first time we've seen him playing this well at the beginning of the season, in the middle of the season. And, and it's happened with the offensive line all mixed up and jumbled and different looks every week. And, you know... And, and so I think it's a combination of stuff. I think uh, Arthur Smith gets some credit here. I think Najee Harris should get a ton of credit himself for showing up this year, super motivated after the Steelers declined his option. He's been a total pro, uh, was, was was super engaged from day one of OTAs all the way through. And then, you know, I think credit to this jumbled up mess of an offensive line that has found a way to continue to give him running room uh, despite being with different guys every week and some of their best players out for the year, I think uh, they deserve a lot of credit, this credit too. But Nazi Harris has definitely done the job. Uh, he works his butt off. And um, I think, you know, there was a game or two in there where like it was, it was some head scratch and stuff. And were you there the day he showed up in the locker room with a sling on his arm? Yeah, mm-hmm. I don't think he was 100% healthy earlier this year. I think you're looking at, uh, Najee Harris at the full ability of what he can do right now. And if, if that full ability can last all year, it might very well be a very serious threat that makes the Steelers serious contenders. They are certainly right now among among that, that conversation. They're first in the AFC North. They're, they, they're, they're tied for the second best record in the AFC right now with tiebreakers. They're in third in the AFC right now behind the Texans ahead of the Bills. Um, Allen, I really think that this Steelers team, there's a lot of potential here to grow. And like you said earlier, I do not think that they have touched their ceiling. I don't think they've gotten close to their ceiling yet as far as their as far as finding a consistency on offense. And if they can have some games where that offense and that defense come together and both play really good football and hit their potentials, that might, if they get, and they do that against a big opponent, like, you know, down the stretch, the Ravens in some of those games, the Chiefs, the Eagles. Maybe they could pull off more of these wins and we could be talking about the Steelers in a much different light when you're getting closer to playoff time. I agree. I think, you know, this is a team that right now, AFC North is open. I think they should, yeah, I think you start changing the conversation about the goals for this team. Everyone talked about win a playoff game. I think they should be talking about winning the division right now. That's certainly something that we're that we're looking at right now with the way the Ravens just lost to the Browns. It's an open thing. We did an AFC squad show for the Locked On Podcast Network where you've been seeing them published on this channel. This is the first week that I've been able to attend one because your boy works like five jobs here in Pittsburgh. Uh, but uh, we finally, I finally had time to hop on. We talk about that a lot. So check out that AFC squad show coming out later this week on this very channel right where you get – your uh your uh all your locked on Steelers podcast. Alan, thanks so much for joining us here on the Locked On Steelers Podcast. Let me know I can find you, follow you, and get more of your work. A Saunders underscore PGH on X Instagram and TikTok, PGH Steelers Now. Sites account SteelersNow.com is where all my written work lives, and you can find my podcast, Steelers Morning Rush and Steelers Afternoon Drive with Zachary Smith on the Steelers Now YouTube page or anywhere you find podcasts. Thank you, Alan, for joining us. Appreciate your presence, as always, on the podcast. I'm Chris Carter. Follow me on Twitter and Instagram at Carter Critiques. Read my work at the Pittsburgh Post-Gazette, post-gazette.com. Find me here on the Locked On Steelers podcast every day, Monday through Friday, breaking down your Pittsburgh Steelers. Back here tomorrow with more on your Steelers right here on the Locked On Steelers podcast. (laughs) 